In the previous video, we have created our first algorithm, meaning the simple random walk. And now I would like to create a class that will use this algorithm to start creating our procedural dungeon. So let's right click in the scripts folder and let's create a new C -sharp script. Let's call it simple random walk map generator. Or maybe dungeon generator. Great, let's open it up in Visual Studio. Great. Now here again, we are going to delete the update and start methods. And first of all, we would like to create a vector to int start position. So let's create protected vector to int. And let's call it start position. Let's set it to be equal to vector to int dot zero. And we can expose it in the editor, adding the serialized field attribute. So in square brackets, type serialized field above the protected vector to int start position. So now we will be able to set it through the inspector. Now for the simple random walk, we will need to have some parameters. We are going to create a private int. Let's call it iterations equals 10. Let's create public int walk length equals 10 by default and let's create public full and we are going to call it start randomly each iteration and let's set it to be true by default so iterations will be the number of iterations we want to run our random walk algorithm Walk length will be passed to the random walk algorithm itself, and the start randomly each iteration will give us some uh, room to tweak our algorithm. I will explain it in a bit. Again, we can copy the attribute serialized field and paste above each one of those values so that we can set them through the inspector. We are going to put them in a scriptable object in a future video so that we can save our parameters safely in a scriptable object. For now, this is it for the parameters. Let's now create a new method. So let's type public void and let's call it run procedural generation. Okay. And in this method, we are going to run our procedural generation. So first of all, we would like to create our floor positions. So let's type hashet. Again, we are going to use hash set of type vector to int. Let's call it floor positions. And let's make it equal to our new method run random walk. Okay. And since we have access to all the parameters in this class, we do not need to pass here anything. To create this method, alt enter on the name and select from the quick actions menu generate method in this class it will generate us a private method let's set it to be protected instead of private because later on we are going to refactor this code a bit for now here in this method we are going to use our algorithm that we have created in the previous video first of all we will need to create var current position equals our start position next what we will want to do is we are going to create a hash set of vector to int which will be our floor positions so let's call it floor positions equals let's set it to be new and let's select from the snippets hash set uh, of type vector to int and now we are going to iterate over the number of iterations that we have here and run our random walk algorithm so for tap tap to create it from the snippet i equals zero i less than using tab move to the length and let's type iterations and we are going to loop through the iterations and we are going to call var path equals and we are going to use our procedural generation algorithms static class dot and we can use our simple random walk we need to pass here our start position so this will be the current position and we need to pass the walk length. So let's pass walk length. Great. And now, since we are using hash sets, 
What we can do is we can add this path created by our simple random walk algorithm to our floor positions. So let me rename it and let's uh, call floor positions in the for loop dot and we can use union with which is one of the methods that allows us to create a union so add the positions from the path to our floor positions ensuring that we do not copy anything that is a duplicate so union with path and this will be simply copying the positions from the path to our floor positions hash set so basically we have now run one simple random walk algorithm we have created our floor positions and now we have our start randomly each uh, iteration and this allows us to not start from the same start position but rather to start from any random position of our path that we have created or of our floor positions that already exists so this will ensure that each path found by our simple random walk algorithm will be connected to the previously created floor so if our start randomly each iteration is on we are going to call current position equals our floor position and what we will want to do is access a random element now since hash set is unordered collection we do not have any method to access a specific index so what we can do is use link library so let's type dot element add and we, if we click alt enter on this we have this using system.link which will appear at the top using system.link library which is a library that allows us to query any collection that we have in our project so we can easily access an element at in this collection and we want to access a random element so let's type random dot range and since this doesn't work because there is a conflict between system.random and unity engine dot random alt enter on random and we are going to select using random equals unity engine dot random we want to use unity engines random library great so now we can pass here zero as the start value and we can pass here floor positions as the uh, dot count as the last value so we are going to select a random position from our floor positions hash set and in this manner we are going to simply set it to a random position and again run simple random walk algorithm using this random position creating a larger dungeon or larger room great now all we need to do is simply return our floor positions since each path will be integrated with our floor positions hash set using this union with method now since we do not have any way to visualize yet the result what we can do is simply in our run procedural generation call for each tab tab to create it bar position so using tab move to the item and change it to position again tab to move to the collection and let's type floor positions and we are going to simply debug dot log each position so we can see what positions were selected in the next video we are going to create a tile map visualizer to visualize it but for now this should be enough let's go back to unity great we have our two classes what we want to do is create a new object in the hierarchy so right click in the hierarchy create empty and let's call it simple random walk map or a dungeon or maybe dungeon generator okay and let's reset the transform and we are going to add component here and let's type simple random walk generator which gives us our script that we have created as you can see we have our start position our iterations so let's set iterations to be one and walk length 10 and let's uh, well this will not do anything if we have iteration equals one now we can save it but we do not have any way to run this algorithm so let's right click in the hierarchy and select ui and create a button great and we can move it a bit using the move tool okay if you are not seeing it you can cl click f to focus on it and scroll and we have our button let's select the button in the hierarchy let's select the text and let's set uh, let's change it to generate okay we can increase the font size and uh, if we go down inside the button so let's select the button in the hierarchy and let's go down in the inspector we should be able to see the on click event 
we can add using the plus icon let's drag in the non object our simple random walk dungeon generator and let's select no function simple random walk generator and we have our function run procedural generation if we now press play we should be able to click this button and see the logs in the console and as you can see those are the positions that our random walk generation has created for us great now we can see that we have one two three four five six seven logs but what we had in our simple random walk dungeon generator was 10 so why is that uh, it is only because our random walk has visited twice or a couple of times the same position and this is why we have a smaller number of steps than we have set now of course we could modify our code to always end up with 10 positions just keep on going until you get a new position but for now let's focus on visualizing our path so we can more easily see how this random walk works and what is the output so we are going to create a way to visualize our result in the next video see you there